We are extremely excited about our understanding of targeted therapies. In the last several years, we've seen major progress with regard to the use of immunotherapy. It's my hope in the next couple of years that we'll have a much better understanding of these areas and how we can bring them to bear against the many diseases that we call cancer. Five and a half years ago, I was sitting in an examination room by myself. This resident walked in and said, it looks like metastatic disease and there's just so much of it. She said, I hate to tell you this. I need to let you know that Luke has leukemia and that I need you to get the chop right away. I just remember thinking, oh my God, how do we fix them? I went back in and they discovered a second tumor and it had wrapped around my adrenal gland. I was out of out of hope at that point, you know. There was there was nothing left to do. When you have a disease like cancer, you want to know what's going to cure it. Is it going to go away? It took me quite a while to get a grip on the fact that this was a terrible disease I had. Everything we know today about how to take care of individuals with cancer is based on the research that's been done in the past, both the basic science research and the clinical research. He said there, there was a, a new drug out there and it basically takes your immune system and turns it on to fight the cancer. And I just remember all I could think about was my daughter because I'm a single mom. And at the time she was eight years old. The way my treatment has just been orchestrated, how I've found all the right people and all the right drugs, you know, has been pretty amazing. I, I have hope more now. I mean, it's just grown with, with each next treatment that works and each new doctor that I meet, I have a lot of hope. His exact words were, if we can't cure you, we'll come up with the next best thing to keep you going until we find something where we're gonna get the positive result. With CLL and maybe other types of leukemia, it's never totally gone. When you have it, you're not cured. He said, well, in the meantime, we've come up with a couple different options for people like you. It would help me prolong my quality of life. There's just no thought about it. I, I want it in. And he said, let me put it like this to you, Dave. Right now, as we sit here, you have a 100% chance of dying. Come on the trial. We'll look after you. You stand a 50-50 chance of living. Well, you know, 50-50 is the best odds that were on the table. So I took them. I couldn't imagine not doing clinical trials because I wouldn't be here five and a half years later without them. I mean, there's, there just wasn't standard treatment that would cover me. It is impressive to see the number of new therapies that have come available to patients over the last decade. And I think this is a direct result of the research that we've been able to support over the last several decades. New systemic therapies, new targeted therapies, new immunotherapies, new ways of doing surgery, new ways of delivering radiotherapy. All of these are vital in our ability to try to decrease the burden of cancer. The first month, he was just standard of care for ALL. And they thought there might have been something else from the beginning. All of his tests were sent to research, and it came back that he did have a chromosome translocation. So he went on to a trial drug called ruxolitinib, which was another chemo drug. In addition to all the other chemos, because he was still standard of care, nine months later, one of the tests came back that the ruxolitinib had worked. So the hope was that Luke would be finally into remission. As long as you stay strong, like you can get through it. And once you get through it, you'll feel way better, and you'll feel like you just defeated something that's really hard to defeat. After the first three months to hear Dr. Tanier say, well, the tumor's reduced by 30%. You know, my wife and I are like, holy wow. <laughs> you know, it's, that is awesome. After being on Yandelis for three treatments, I had a CT and the CT showed significant improvement. I had 11 tumors in my body. After nine shots of Texentric, 10 of them had gone, and the primary tumor had reduced to the size of your thumbnail. It killed the melanoma. It's a pretty strong thing to say about a drug. It kills cancer, and that's what it did. It killed cancer in me. I'm OK. I'm still here. I'm with my kid, so what else matters? I mean, it really puts things in perspective. My life in these last two years has gone from preparing for death to can't get enough of it, love it. I'm doing fine, I'm working, we're traveling, just enjoying life. It took 17 and a half years to finally come through and this promise, but he came through, knowing what drugs to put me on, what to keep me going, and everything else. Over the course of my career, we've seen cancer mortality drop about 1% per year, each year, each and every year in the United States. 
And that's because of the advances that we're making from great science, which leads to great care. I have two grandsons, one's 13, one's 10. I want to be able to hold my great grandchildren in my arms. That's what I hope. The importance of funding cancer research is like immeasurable to me. It would be immeasurable to my daughters if they had breast cancer. It's going to touch everybody's life sooner or later. And you don't want to be in the position where you say, well, I didn't approve funding for that. And boy, I wish I would have now. I don't know what the numbers of people are out there who have cancer, but I can only say that they are waiting. Their goal in life is to live long enough so that new drugs are found. It's my hope that we'll continue to have public and governmental support for the importance of cancer research. And of course, we all hope that ultimately this will translate into the crucial resources that are going to be required in order to make a difference against cancer.